Second, the UK faces a real threat to the future security of our supply. Security supply means maintaining supply to homes and businesses across the country by ensuring that there is sufficient generation capacity from diverse sources and a resilient transmission network, neither of which exists today. As existing plants close, much of the replacement will be intermittent generation, such as wind. And while decarbonizing our electricity generation will bring benefits in terms of diversification of supply, further action is required to ensure that we have sufficient capacity at all times. Additionally, improving energy efficiency and making better use of existing generation by making the network smarter and more responsive, including through better demand side response storage and interconnection will make important contributions. I don't think we can underestimate the point of demand side management when we're talking about infrastructure anywhere. It's not just about putting the kit on the ground. It's how we use it and do we use it in the smartest way. Third, meeting our objectives will require a huge amount of new investment. Up to 110 billion pounds in the electricity sector is, will be required by 2020 and continued investment in the 2020s at, greater, at levels greater than in the past. The electricity market reform is intended to put in place the conditions to catalyze this investment. This means creating a long-term stable and predictable electricity market arrangement which is attractive to investors at home and abroad. The final area in which the IUK is trying to address the barriers to investment is in the land use planning system, which in the UK is notoriously complex and slow. The effective, the delivery of effective and timely infrastructure projects requires transparent planning and a consent regime that is able to provide a level of certainty, a timely decision and flexibility to meet the needs of infrastructure developers at both national and local levels. The UK government recently announced radical changes to the planning system, elements of which include a streamlined, more focused pro-growth national planning policy, ensuring a fast-track planning pro process for major infrastructure applications, piloting a land auction model starting with public sector land, measures to streamline the planning application and consent regime, and a powerful presumption in favor of sustainable development. IUK recognizes the importance of planning to infrastructure projects and is continuing to work with the relevant parts of government to ensure that planning issues can be resolved in a timely manner. Now moving on from the enablers and barriers to investment, I want to finish by talking a little bit about delivery. There are a number of elements to this, but one of our main focuses has been on the cost of infrastructure delivery in the UK. Between 15 billion and 20 billion will be spent in the UK each year directly on renewals and enhancement projects and programs. That is not new infrastructure, but just keeping what we've got going. The ability to deliver crucial investment priorities efficiently is essential to achieving economic growth objectives. However, the weight of evidence confirms in a study done by IUK that the United Kingdom is more expensive than its European peer group in delivering infrastructure, and there are significant opportunities to reducing costs in delivery. IUK published a report in December demonstrating that excessive costs are largely generated in the early phases of project planning. This work presents a real opportunity to enhance the UK's performance. In particular, the report found that a lack of a visible and continuous pipeline of forward work and an absence of clarity and direction for major public projects are key hindrances to driving down costs and delivery of infrastructure. Sound familiar? Addressing these issues effectively will help reduce the cost of infrastructure and deliver significant benefits in terms of performance and value for money. There's a clear opportunity to realize savings of at least 15% or two to three billion pounds per annum through waste reduction and more effective governance of infrastructure projects. We're now working to implement these review findings and a plan for action was published earlier this year setting out how the government will take forward the work program. So to move from this report stage, always easy to produce a report, to an action stage, we're doing a number of things. We've established a government construction board in partnership with the Cabinet Office and the Department for Business, which is designed to provide a central point of contact for the construction industry within government. We've also appointed 
cost review industry champions and formed stakeholder groups in partnership with the Institute of Civil Engineers. It's hoped that these people will hold the government to account on implementing the cost saving manager, uh, measures, at least in public projects. We've agreed with industry a charter to promote the behavioral changes that do underpin the cost review. Just getting everyone to agree what needs to be done is a big step forward. As noted earlier, we're also accelerating work to enable publication of a public sector construction pipeline, and we are engaging with the Department of Transport to use their high-speed rail link between London and the northwest of the country as a potential demonstrator project for a new approach to cost containment. In summary, I believe that the UK is getting a lot of things right in tackling the challenge of infra infrastructure investment. Clearly, there are things we could do better. Long-term planning is not a comfortable bedfellow with five-year election cycles. The natural desire for local control over land use isn't easy to square with the execution of large-scale projects of national importance like high-speed railways and expanding renewable power generation capacity. The infrastructure required to move the economy to, uh, to one less dependent on fossil fuels isn't cheap, as we all know, and in straightened times, the trade-off between the short-term costs and the long-term savings can be a difficult sell politically. There is significant public op opposition to what are seen as excessive profits made by private, the private sector in delivering public services which is creating political pressure on independent regulation and narrowing the field for rational debate. The UK has not found solutions to these problems, but we're moving in the right direction. I've enjoyed the day so far, and it's always nice to know that your problems are the same ones that everyone else has, and I'm counting on nicking some of your best ideas to take home. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doug. Yes, and I, I don't know if it's uplifting or depressing that our problems are the same. But, uh, um, we might be looking from different angles on some of them as well. It's my pleasure to uh, ask uh, Swati Dave, Executive General Manager at National Australia Bank, to move a vote of thanks. Okay. I, I did say to Doug that we're going to have an issue with the microphones because we have a slight height difference between us. I wanted to thank Doug very much um, for sharing his insights on the infrastructure challenge in the UK. We at NAB are absolutely delighted that Doug could make the trip to join us here. I guess I, I was a little bit concerned that we were rated number 34 in those rankings, um, but we are in good company and I think competition's good, so we need to get above Slovenia. Doug raised some themes that I think are particularly relevant for our market, and as you can see throughout the presentation. I mean, there is so much of converging of themes. But the themes that I'm more, you know, I guess I'm quite interested in is the issue around pipeline, certainty, prioritisation, and how do you actually get more of a varied funding mix into the play? How do you attract more different investors to help fund infrastructure? So in closing, I just want to say, could you please join me in thanking Doug? Um, thank you very much. <laughs>